To finish our video series on styles, we want to talk about tables. That's because table styles are a little unique in Flare compared with styles for other kinds of features. As with lots of things in Flare, there are multiple ways to control the way your tables look. First, you can open the properties for a specific table you've inserted and make changes in there. But those settings apply only to that particular table. If you want to control the look of lots of tables from one place, you need to use a style sheet. But here's the thing. With tables, there are two kinds of style sheets you can use. You can edit standard CSS table styles in a regular style sheet, or you can use a special table style sheet. You might be wondering, why do I need a special table style sheet if I've already got a regular style sheet with standard CSS table styles in it? That's a good question. The fact is, you don't need to edit both. You're not limited to one kind of style sheet or the other when it comes to your tables. The reason Flare has special table style sheets is that they let you quickly and easily format tables with different patterns of alternating rows or columns. And that's something that would be extremely difficult to do in a regular style sheet. Here's how table style sheets work in Flare. First, you add a table style sheet to your project. You can do this from the project ribbon by clicking the New button and selecting Add Table Style. Flare will add the new table style sheet to the Content Explorer. You might even want to add multiple table style sheets depending on how many different looks for tables you want to have. Once you've added a table style sheet to your project, you can open it in the Table Style Editor. There are various tabs in the editor that let you work with the different parts of a table, such as rows, columns, headers, and footers. Let's say you want your tables to have alternating rows with different colored backgrounds. Maybe you want your tables to have two yellow rows, one green row, two yellow rows, one green row, and so on. First, select the Rows tab. You'll already have one row pattern in the Row Styles area. This will represent your yellow rows that you want to be shown first in the table. You want two yellow rows in the pattern, so change the Repeat cell to two. Now you can go down to the Background section and choose a shade of yellow. The Preview section at the bottom of the editor will show you the yellow rows. Now click this button in the Row Styles area. This adds another row pattern. You only want one row in this pattern, so you don't need to make a change in the Repeat cell. You can set the background color to a shade of green. The preview changes accordingly. Now you've got a table style sheet with alternating patterned rows. If you need to make changes to either pattern in the style sheet, just select it in the row styles area and change any of the fields on that tab. For more information about all of the fields and settings in the table style editor, see this topic in the online help. When you open a content file like a topic, you can insert a new table. To do this, select the table ribbon. On the left side of the ribbon, you can use the insert table button. If you click the face of the button, the Insert Table dialog opens. You can provide all kinds of information about the table. One of the things you can tell Flare is if you want to use a table style sheet for it. Just select the style sheet from the Table Style field. The table will be inserted and it will immediately have the look from that table style sheet. Going back to the table ribbon, if you instead click the down arrow on the Insert Table button, you can quickly add a table by moving your mouse over the grid and selecting the number of rows and columns you want. Flare will add a plain table to the content file, but you can still apply a table style to it. To do this, right-click in the table, select Table Style, then choose your style sheet. And the really good news is that if you insert or remove rows in the table, the pattern will adjust automatically. Here's another cool thing about table style sheets. It has to do with the mediums that we talked about previously in this video series. The same mediums from your regular style sheet are also available in your table style sheets. Maybe you want tables to look differently in online output than in print output. If so, you can first use the default medium to format the style sheet for online output. Then, from the medium field, you can select the print medium. You'll notice that the print medium inherits the settings from the default medium, but you can make any changes you want to override those settings. So those are the special table style sheets. But what about table styles in regular style sheets? Well, when you insert a table into a content file, you'll see structure bars to the left of the table with different letters on the bars. These bars indicate the various parts of the table. The outermost bar represents the general table tag. Within that is a T-body bar, which holds the main rows and columns. If you have a header row, you'll see a T-head structure bar. If you add a footer row, you still have a T-foot structure bar. And if you add a caption, you'll see a caption structure bar. At the next level, you'll see a bunch of TR structure bars, which represent each row. If you click in a row, you'll also see a TH bar or a TD bar. These are used to format the header text or body text in each cell. And if you look at the structure bars at the top, you'll see some bars that represent the columns in the table. All of these are standard table styles from the World Wide Web Consortium. After you open your regular style sheet, you can use the filter field in the upper left corner to show table styles. 
you'll see a list of styles that match all of the parts of the table. So if you want to use your regular style sheet to control the look of your tables, you can edit any of these styles. But this raises an obvious question. What if you use a table style sheet as well as the table styles from a regular style sheet? What happens? Will Flare use your settings from both style sheets? Yes, it will. But that being said, it's usually best to focus on just one type of style sheet to control the look of your tables, not both. Why is that? Because if you use both kinds of style sheets and give Flare conflicting instructions for a setting, only one can be used in the output. If you tell it to have a red border in one style sheet and a blue border in the other, Flare can't very well use both of them. So which style setting will you see? You'll see the one from the table style sheet. But if you also set something different in the local properties dialog, you'll see that instead. So the local table properties have highest precedence, followed by the special table style sheet, followed by the regular style sheet. Oh, and by the way, if you decide to make style changes to the standard CSS table styles, such as table, TD, and TR, you may consider using classes instead of the parent styles. There are some arguments for using the parent styles and other arguments for using classes. The online help topic called Editing Tables talks about this. Here's one final thing you should know about table styles. If you click in a table cell and type some text, you might decide to press Enter to add another line of text. But as soon as you do that, P tags will be added within the TD tag. We had to do that because now you're telling Flare that you want paragraphs, and it's not valid to have two TD tags in a cell. So it's possible you might end up with some table cells that only have one line and are using just the TD tag. But then you might have other cells with multiple lines that are using P tags. Why is that a big deal? Because if the style settings on your TD style look one way, and the settings on your P style look another way, you can end up with a goofy looking table. For example, you might have extra space above and below the text in cells where there are P tags. The good news is that there's an easy solution for this. Here's what we recommend you do. First, in your regular style sheet, create a class for the P tag and name it something like table text. The idea is that you'll use that class for all of the main rows and columns in your tables. You can also create another style class for your header and footer cells if you need to. Edit your special style class to look the way you want. Now we're going to tell Flare to use this style class for your table cells whenever you create a new table and apply your table style sheet to it. Open your table style sheet and select the rows tab. By the way, you can also do this in the columns, header, and footer tabs if you want. Scroll down to the bottom until you see the cell content style section. Click on the tag and select P. Then provide your class name in the next field. After you save your changes, you'll find that any time you create a new table using that table style sheet, each row will automatically have a P tag with your style class. This will help keep your table content looking consistent. Well, that about does it for table styles and for this video series. We hope you enjoyed exploring this subject with us. And always remember, styles are your friends.